The Mariner 10 mission was a flyby of Mercury, and it made three flybys. This was, this was in 1974-75, uh, and it imaged about 45% of the planet. So there's 55% that we have never seen before at all, nothing. And that mission was, in fact, reconnaissance in preparation for a follow-on orbiter, which never happened until now. Two, one, and zero, and liftoff of Messenger on NASA's mission to Mercury, a planetary enigma in our inner solar system. I've waited 33.7 years <laughs> for this day. Yes, I'm ex very excited. Today is the day we finally fly by Mercury after several years of waiting. Um, so we're getting very excited and I think in about an hour we actually fly about 200 kilometers from the surface of Mercury if all goes well. We'll be commencing in, at 1902. The spacecraft is actually behind uh, the, the planet and we're just waiting to see that signal drop. And again, a reminder, closest approach is 1904-39. Space exploration is a very risky business. Certainly flying by Mercury is risky. We're 11 times closer to the sun than at the Earth. There are so many things that can go wrong. And yet, so many things go right. Messenger ops. Uh, the applause says it all. Radio science does see the expected one-way signal. Why are we flying a mission to Mercury? Um, the process of uh, exploring our solar system uh, is one where we're, we're ultimately trying to uh, learn how the Earth and the other planets came to be. And every time we've visited one of our sister planets, we've learned how diverse the outcome of planet formation and planet evolution has been. And so simply to complete the inventory of what has been the outcome of planet formation processes in the inner solar system, there's been a need, ever since Mariner 10, to send a spacecraft to Mercury that would take this global view of the planet. This is the thing. Uh, when you look at Mercury with the untrained eye, people say, well, it's just like the moon. You know, we've been to the moon many times. We know all about it. So, you know, it's not interesting. Mercury's not interesting. Uh, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Mercury is the, uh, the closest planet to the sun. It's a terrestrial planet just like the Earth and Mars and Venus. Um, but it's a planet of extremes. It's very, very hot at the surface. It's 11 times hotter than the Earth. It's one of the smallest planets. It's only slightly larger than our own moon. It has a very large core, an unusually large core. It's about 75% of the radius of the planet, uh, which is much larger than any of the other terrestrial planets, which no one can explain at this time. So basically, we'll have the geological maps and the projection here with all the uh, sequence charts. So go to this chart for the details. Everyone is sitting patiently or impatiently waiting for the data to come down. We're just checking that all our systems are ready, that we're talking to the Mission Operations Center so that as soon as those images hit the ground, uh, we will get them into our software. We can process them and calibrate them and then start to look at them and start to interpret them. Hey, Eric. Hey, Eric. This is Louise. The suspense is killing me. I know. It's killing us, too. Is it really? We're watching the, uh, the, the transactions go back and forth. It's just taking a while. Okay. We'll just try and be patient, then. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Thanks for that. I don't so know that. what to do. We're, we're eating brie and crackers over here. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> do you have I don't know what's going to happen. It's not going to get deleted. It won't get deleted until they have confirmation that it's on the ground. So from that perspective, we're, we're confident. <laughs> On this screen here is, is your entire project site. Oh, there yes. it is. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Where's Bob's John? We've got to get Bob in here. Is that spectacular? Look at this puppy right here, Bob. See? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there they are. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, that's, that looks like right, right? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's very emotional for me. Really. I've waited a long time for this. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, but it's, uh, you know, it's such a long wait, and boom, there it is. You know, I'm not a crater counting guy, but it looks a little less cratered on the right. Yeah. Yeah. So later this afternoon, we're having a meeting of the whole science team, and we're going to get together. And at this point, people have had a few hours to start looking at the images and really taking a, a close look at them. It's excavated something really bright. So we're expecting that people are going to start pointing out some things that they've learned already from the data and some new things they might have discovered that we wouldn't have seen before. OK, first of all, the most important thing we can say is to congratulate the whole team for some fantastic images. It's just beautiful. From this flyby, we're particularly interested in studying the history of Mercury. We're seeing a lot of really exciting things in the images. We have these planes which are deformed out here, which we can get ages on. We have this crater, which impacts into those, which we can get an age on. And we have these interior planes, which are further deformed, which we can get an age on as well. So the chronology really ought to be, you know, and this is oh, one example. Yeah. We will be able to look at the features on the surface and see which ones overlap other features and try and put together a time history of how did Mercury form and evolve. It's a bit like being a detective, you know, we have the crime scene and we have to work out what happened. Well, although we've just had a very exciting flyby, um, our work has only just begun. A few minutes uh, looking ahead to the Mercury 2 flyby. Uh, this is the first of uh, three flybys of Mercury, and that should give the spacecraft just the right amount of push it needs to um, get into orbit around Mercury in 2011. At that point, we will orbit the planet for one Earth year, imaging the whole surface in 11 colors and we'll be taking data with the other seven instruments on the spacecraft. Every time we uh, go to a new place, uh, every time we discover planets around other stars, there's a greater diversity of phenomena and landscape and processes than we've appreciated before. So on that basis, we expect to be surprised.